As a famous man once said, let's run it back. He's Corey Clark, lead writer for Warchant.com. I'm Aslan Hajavani, director of digital media. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access to the ultimate seminal sports source. You're probably like, well, why? There's nothing going on. You're wrong. You're so, Please. so wrong. We've got seminal madness going on right now on Warchant.com. Corey, Ira, Gene, Jeff Cameron determined the 64 best players of all time in football at Florida State history. You folks get to make the votes. If you're a subscriber, you can make an argument for your guy in each matchup. And if you have the best argument, you'll win a $25 e-card to GarnetAndGold.com. So uh, join, get better at everything you do in life by joining Warchant.com. Corey, are you like relieved now that you've got the bracket out of the way after, you know, creating it? Uh, no, I wouldn't say rel- I don't, the relief wasn't something I felt. Uh, joy, excitement. Ready to ready to give it to the world. Ready to give it to FSU Seminole Nation and let them uh, vote on the best Florida State player of all time. Uh, and that'll be going on. We think at least for a month or two. Like the voting and everything that'll take place will be a good long while because we got to go, you know, bracket by bracket and matchup by matchup. So it's going to take a while. So buckle down, get ready for it. It's going to be. Right. You also buckle down your laptop. You're shaking. You're giving people seasickness. Uh, so we're not here to, to pump the bracket, although it's a pretty cool thing. Check it out. A lot of people are already debating it. The whole bracket is available up on warchant.com right now. But the news of the day on Monday was that on Monday morning, uh, Devin Vassell, a sophomore standout for Florida State, went ahead and declared via Twitter his intentions uh, to enter the NBA draft. Uh, Corey, what was your sort of uh, initial reaction when you heard news of Vassell's decision? Devin, what are you doing? We could have, he could have been magical next year. No, I was, uh, I'm happy for him. He's a, um, really, he's a really polite kind of humble kid when you talk to him. Um, and soft spoken to the point, and he's from Gwinnett County, which is where I'm from. So we got that going for us. Um, it just, you know, uh, it's a really neat story, much like Cabin Gelly. Um, a little different because Cabin Gelly was from Canada and Cabin Gelly went to a prep school for a year because he was so, um, unknown coming out of high school. But two guys that were under the radar that Florida State found, and then after a year or two years or three years, two years in Devin's case, three years in Kevin Gelly's case, they become early entries in an NBA draft. Um, Kevin Gelly was a first-round pick. going to be a first-round pick, too. It's just a matter of where. Um, and, you know, if you're guaranteed, and I, you, you just have to hope he's getting good advice, which I, I, I'm going to assume he is. And if you're hearing you're going to be a top 20 pick or 25 or just a first round pick in general, because those contracts are guaranteed that uh, it's hard to say no to that. It's life changing money. It's hard to say no to that. He could have come back and maybe made some more money up front, but it's life changing money, man. And I, and I have every I think he's going to be in the NBA for a long time. I don't think he's going to be a flash in the pan that's done after two or three years. I think that guy, how hard he plays, the way he shoots and the way he defends, I think he's going to be in the league for a good long time. Um, Corey, so I guess with all that being said now, um, just, is there a level of frustration, I guess, if you're a Florida state fan that you're losing a guy like this, uh, this soon, I mean, is that a natural feeling to have, or is that just being selfish? Well, it is being selfish, but I also understand it. I mean, you had Kevin Gelly, who you, you had on campus for three years, but only got him for two, only really played starters minutes for one. And Devin Vassell, you had for two years, but really only got him for one. He had some nice moments as a, some freshman, some really big moments, including the Virginia Tech game in the ACC tournament. Um, and then Notre Dame, I think he was the leading scorer in that game, uh, or one of the leading scorers when they played Notre Dame last year, too, as a freshman. So he had big moments, and you could see the talent there. But you almost feel like, man, we're, we, you know, we, didn't get De- we didn't get to see Devin Vassell at full capacity for, <clears throat> excuse me, for two years. But also, he wasn't that guy last year. The guy he was this year, he was not that guy last year. Proved by leaps and bounds. I think it's frustrating, but I also think it's a way of life, man. When you're a good basketball team, um, you know, and you're and you're a very good program, this is what happens. You don't in the days of developing developing them till they're seniors, they're done. So you know, you have another guy on on the roster that didn't even average double figures this year, and Patrick Williams. That might be we might be doing another video about him. In, in a few days. So that's just the reality of what Florida State is now. And next year, you're going to be doing it with Scotty Barnes, maybe Calhoun, maybe somebody else. Um, that's where you are. You just, Florida State, you think Florida State is in a place where, you know, 
you rebuild, you reload, you don't rebuild. If I feel like it's in that place. I didn't I didn't know it was there until this past year. They lost six guys, six of their top eight guys, and had a better team. So I think now they're in the reloading phase. And they're just I assume they're gonna be good again next year. I think what's frustrating about it though is you didn't get to see Devin, Patrick, Trent, MJ, all those guys play together to see how far they could have gone in this tournament. It's not so much the frustration of next year. Because I think we all thought about, I don't know, four or five games into the season, okay, there's a good chance Devin might be, might not be coming back. It's 50-50, maybe. So that's always been a possibility. But you thought you'd get to see how this one ended. You'd get Now you, you, you basically, Devin Vassell was a non-factor in the NCAA tournament his whole career. And I'm not saying he didn't play well last year. He hit some shots against Murray State. Um, he might have done some things against Vermont. I don't remember. But he was a non-factor in the NCAA and through no fault of his own. And that's just a bum. Patrick Williams never maybe goes his whole life without ever playing an NCAA tournament game. That, to me, is the real frustration. Would you agree or disagree with the, the sort of sentiment that it feels like for Florida State to ever reach their ceiling and, and maximize what they really can be, uh, they need to find guys like Devin Vassell, and they need to be able to keep them for longer than two seasons. No, I don't. I mean, I think they hit a. They were pretty. They were bumping their head on their ceiling this year, um, and he was he was just a sophomore. Um, now they did find a guy like Devin Vassell. I I don't know how common that is though. I've been covering them for twelve years. The Cabin Gelly and the Devin Vassell route aren't typical. I mean, look, Cabin Gelly redshirted. And I don't know the last time an early entry into the NBA draft redshirted. That just does not happen, except for injury. I would guess that if you went back the last 30 years of guys going pro early, I would think the amount of them that redshirted would be like 2%. But that's how raw Kevin Gelly was. And then he just made those leaps and he, he improved by leaps and bounds. And then Devin, too. I don't, but I think that I just think that they came back to back. I don't know if that's necessarily just because they came in back to back years, I don't know if that's necessarily a blueprint. Because there aren't a lot of Devin Vassells and Fiondu Cabangelis walking around. But as long as Florida State keeps bringing in the Scotty Barnes, the Sardar, Cal Sardar Calhoun, I'm going to just call him Calhoun, um, and Patrick Williams of the world, they don't necessarily need to go digging in the rough all the time to find the— it looks like they're just getting the diamonds in the diamond store. They don't have to find diamonds in the rough anymore. They're just getting them from the store. So I think that's where Florida State is now. And if you look at who they're recruiting now— yeah, they'll always take a few guys like that, but by and large, they're recruiting uh, elite, elite talent. So this, you think, is going to become more of the norm is guys leaving after a year or two, the big time guys, and then occasion. But you also get the Trent Forrest and the Terrence Manns. But frankly, Terrence Mann and Trent Forrest, when they were sophomores, weren't close to what Devin Vassell was as a sophomore. So that's the trade off. With that said, I mean, neither of us. Uh... You know, have, have been in an NBA war room in a few years. You know, we gave that up a while ago to right. uh, cover Florida yeah. State. But it seems like most outlets have Devin going somewhere there in the teens. Um, you know, what do you think it is about his game that makes him enticing? And is there anything about his game that could have been vastly improved had he stayed? Or does it seem like this probably was the right move ultimately? Yeah, I don't know what his – you know, I was thinking about it. The team coming back next year, if he was a junior – um, and what, what his, what his game would have looked like. And I think it just would have been similar. I mean, he's averaging nine or 10 shots a game. I think he averaged 10 shots per game. Uh, and I don't know that next year he was going to average 16. He's not great at getting to the basket yet, or like maybe getting in the paint and finding people. He's not a, he's not an elite passer. He's not an elite creator, but that's not what his role will be in the NBA. Anyway, his role in the NBA will be to play defense and hit threes. And he's been a great shooter at Florida State both years. I think he shot over 40% both both years, or 40% for his career anyway. Um, great mid-range game, although that's kind of not part of the NBA game anymore. If you can shoot mid-range jumpers, back it up a couple feet and just make those threes. But he's long. He's really athletic. He cares about defense. He's going to try. He was the leading rebounder on the team. He was one of the leading shot blockers. He was one of the leading stealers in the fact that he can really shoot. And he cares about defense. That's what's enticing. It's a guy that plays defense hard and really well, is long, can shoot threes, and uh, you know has a mindset where he doesn't have to take 25 shots a game. I think that's what makes him really appealing. There's a many reasons that make him appealing to NBA scouts, but that's one. those are four or five of them. All right, Corso, we'll never know what could have happened uh, this season, although we kind of can if we keep following your columns that you're posting on warchant.com. Right. Uh, but this... Uh, yeah, and Vassell's played, Vassell's played pretty well in those first two games, yeah. quietly. 
He had a quiet 19 against LSU, but I mean that that game was over by you know, 10 Malik, minutes. Malik Malik's got to let his voice be heard on those dunks, so you know who could hear Devin amidst the sure. roar. And obviously, the story coming out of that game was what Wyatt said in the locker room post game. But if you if you ignore that, Vassell Vassell had a really good game. I thought he was probably the best player on the floor. How does this affect, uh, I guess, maybe your outlook for Florida State in in 2020? I'm probably going to ask you the same thing in a few days. We assume if uh, Patrick Williams goes ahead and follows suit, but just for now. Uh, how do you feel, and, and what kind of loss is this for Florida State in 2020 or 2021? I mean, it's a big, it, it's a big one. Um, I think from what I've seen and heard about Calhoun, um, you're not losing if he comes in and plays the same position, which you assume he will. You're not losing anything offensively, um, shooting wise. The kid, you know, you watch him shoot; it's just incredible. He is a, he is maybe the best shooter they've ever brought in, and he gets it off in traffic. He's athletic. He's going to do a lot of things offensively that Devin could do. I don't know that you take a huge step back there offensively. It's on the other end of the court where you have no idea. You just have no idea. They don't play defense in Juco. When you watch his highlights or watch his games in Juco, he didn't play a ton of defense. So that's where you're going to – I think that's where Florida State, even though Devin was their leading scorer, I think what they're going to miss him the most is on defense. His, his ability to get rebounds in traffic, his ability to create turnovers with his length, um, his ability to get in transition. That's the stuff that they're going to miss, and you wonder who's going to fill that void because they also are losing Trent, obviously, who was their other guy that could do all that, who could get rebounds in traffic and create turnovers and get going in the fast break. So I think that's their biggest loss. Um, but, man, I'd, we'd be remiss if we didn't just say congratulations to him and we're pulling for him because, again, he was it was really fun to watch him this year. It's a bummer we didn't get to watch him play uh, in March in any postseason games that mattered. But, uh, you know, you hope he has, and I think he will. I think, he'll, I think he'll be in the league for 10 years. I have as much faith in him being in the league as, for 10 years as I do anybody that's come out of Florida State um, really since this turnaround started. I just think that guy, he, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna be a guy that can come off the bench, even as a maybe not a rookie, but his second year in the league. He'll be a knockdown shooter and play defense and get rebounds, and he, I think he's going to be in the league for a long time and make a lot of money. And uh, well, I think we'll always be a really good ambassador for Florida State Absolutely, as well. man. It seems like he always did it the right way. So, again, best of luck to Devin Vassell, who announced on Monday morning that he intends on declaring for the NBA draft anywhere in the teens is kind of where uh, he's projected in most mocks right now. So stay connected for Warchant.com or on to Warchant.com for the latest on all things FSU. For Corey Maslon, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.